Electric vehicles are a key element of the global transition away from fossil fuels. This is why in the past year several European countries have trialed electric highways. These have power lines above one lane from which test vehicles can charge while driving. Some of those trials have now been concluded and the result has been unexpectedly controversial. Let's have a look. The electric highways are built especially for trucks. You here see footage of one that's on the way from the Frankfurt airport to Heidelberg, where we live. They are meant to address the issue that trucks are difficult to power with batteries because the batteries have to be huge or they need to be recharged frequently. Recharging the battery on the way is a clever solution. The trucks in these trials all had diesel engines in addition to the batteries, so the idea was to bring down the diesel consumption. As you can see in this footage, the electric highways have two power lines instead of just one as you have above railroads. This is because to charge the battery, the current doesn't just need to get in, it needs to go through. In an electrically powered train, the current goes through the wheels and into the tracks and the ground. That doesn't work for trucks with rubber tires on asphalt, so you need two power lines. The two power lines are somewhat of an engineering challenge because you need to have a steady connection with both lines on somewhat uneven ground because a highway is not a railroad. But it's not rocket science and some clever engineers built these things in several places starting 2018 and 2019. We now have results from several of these projects projects in Germany and a recent report looked at the project near the Frankfurt airport in particular. They measure that when the truck was hooked up to the power line, the diesel consumption dropped on average from typically 30 liters per 100 kilometers to more like three or four liters. That's a drop by almost a factor 10. If the vehicle was entirely battery powered, the consumption would be zero or through. That sounds pretty remarkable, but remember that all that energy still needs to come from somewhere. And Germany's energy at the moment still comes from 50% fossil fuels. That's supposed to improve, though no one knows exactly how, but that's another story. Well, so for this report, they took the optimistic estimate to 2030 and looked at how much carbon dioxide one could save this way, and they came up with something like roughly 40%. For the case when the truck is entirely electric, you can reduce emissions by about 60%. And this is better than all other methods that they looked at, such as hydrogen or synthetic fuels. Indeed, synthetic fuels, according to this estimate, are actually worse than just running the thing on diesel. We're working on a long video about e-fuels, but it keeps getting longer and longer. To me, this actually looks pretty good. But this project has been extremely controversial and received some very bad press. And I understand why. I've driven on that e-highway hundreds of times since the project started and never saw a single truck using it. This is because there have been only 11 trucks in total using it. According to the new report, the companies who participated in the trial all liked it, but then again they didn't have to pay for it. Who paid for this was the taxpayer. And this is why this project got so controversial. It's taking up a whopping 190 million euro for barely a 20 kilometer stretch. Now, to be fair, much of this was development cost and for the scientific evaluation, etc. But the cost for the electric installation and the necessary highway adjustments alone come to about 2 million per kilometer. Now, according to this recent paper, which just appeared last week, the total e-highway network in Europe would have to be about 12,000 kilometers. That would be about 24 billion euros just to put the cables on the road. And that doesn't address the question of where all that energy is supposed to come from or who would be building all these trucks. So the major issue with the idea isn't that it doesn't work. It's that it's expensive. Some companies are working instead on producing vehicles whose batteries can be swapped rather than having to charge them. And personally, this looks like a better solution to me. One might also wonder why we don't just make better use of the already existing electronic highway, otherwise known as railway. In case you've been wondering too, you'll enjoy this. Some railway companies in the UK have stopped using electrically powered trains 
and go back to using diesel engines because electricity in the UK is just too expensive. Indeed, electricity prices in Europe are the highest in the world and are even higher in Germany than in the UK. And this will eventually kill the idea of the e-highway because so long as diesel is cheaper than electricity, no one will use it anyway. It's a shame, I actually like the idea. Well, I guess we'll just have to build bigger wormholes in quantum computers and then shove the trucks through. As you can see, the media had quite a role to play in the public perception of these tests. The issue is becoming more important by the day, which is why I want to recommend you check out Ground News. That's a news platform which collects all articles that have covered the same topic and provides you with a lot of extra information that you don't find in the standard media. Take for example this recent story about China's reaction to Biden's plans for electric vehicles. Ground News will tell you the talking points of the different political orientations and you can see right away that this story has been much more covered and interpreted by the left. You also get a factuality rating for each news item and it tells you whom the media outlets are owned by. Isn't this amazing to have all this information so readily available? Ground News also has this cool feature which they call blind spot. It shows you news which have been covered almost exclusively by one side of the political spectrum and has been ignored by the other. I found ground news extremely useful to make sense of headlines, especially if I'm not familiar with the source. If you want to give it a try yourself, use our link ground.news Sabina so they'll know I sent you. This will get you a big discount on their Vantage plan with access to all their features, so go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.